socializing. Okay, socializing, actually being in a situation and an environment where you can, if you're single, meet people. And if you're in a couple, like, you know, have a good time, be out with friends. Or, you know, we were out with friends for a dinner party yesterday, and today we're here with you all, and across the world, and, uh, you know, we're going to have a party later. Right? Socializing is very important. If you want to flirt and you're not socializing, especially if you're single, it is not going to happen. You need people to flirt with. <laughs> there is a socializing one, two, three. Uh, many of you in Mastery of Relationship, we teach that socializing 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. 1.0 is you go out to wherever and you talk to the salesperson or the bartender or something like that. 2.0 is you go out and like, you know, it's a community scene and you kind of know some of the people of like that. 3.0 is the, uh, you know, you're throwing the party or you're going to somebody's house party. and You know half the people and you don't know half the people. And uh, people are much more open to being sensual and interactive with you in that environment. So you do want to get to socializing 3.0, but... Wherever you are, you won't spend, I used to spend five minutes in my car just meditating, going into that club and talking to the bartender or going and hanging out with my friends or going to the house party where I actually knew people and could meet people like Alicia. So center yourself. That's number two. Now, number three is where we get into more of what you might associate with flirting. Things like openers. We're going to talk about openers now. Mm -hmm. Openers. <laughs> like, what do you say? <laughs> right? But this is much less important than socializing and being present. Okay? So, hopefully you got that most important part. Openers. Let me say something about openers. You do not need to have some kind of really strange, <laughs> funky <laughs> opener. <laughs> Right? Like, I used to, my favorite one that I used to do that never worked was, hey, do you think having a pet monkey is okay? <laughs> uh, I don't know how to answer that one. Right? Like, it kind of worked, but it kind of didn't work. It was like, you know. I'm, I'm flashing back to that multi-week uh, flirting series we did in Mastery of Relationship, because Alex is sitting right in front of me. And Alex is married now and has a beautiful wife and daughter. And we got to meet Alex when he was totally, completely single. So we've known him the whole time. And in that phase, I remember you joking, oh, we could use that line, like, uh, is it OK to have a pet monkey? And then we'd send all of our students would go out in groups to bars and social events and support each other in flirting. I just flashed back to that memory that was so much fun. And, you it know, worked. It worked. It, right. Like, it's way better than <laughs> staying home. Right? You know, you're actually engaging and going for it. The best opener that we have found, so number three is have a good opener. Okay? And we're going to tell you the best opener that we have found. Right? And this is like tried and true and tested. Like, we've done it and our students have done it. And we've been teaching from 1995 and like... This is the best opener without a doubt. Woman or man, anybody, okay? It is. Hi. <laughs> yes, that is it. Right? I know that one. You know, right? Yeah, you right? Can do you it. know it, right? Hi. Right? Now, there is an alternate version of it, okay? <laughs> the alternate version of it, I'll demonstrate it, is hello. <laughs> right? So the, the point is you're socializing, you're present, and you engage with the person. So the, the first part of flirting is you want to do something that for, forces the other person to interact with you, but at a very minimal level. You do not want to, let's say it's a bar, you do not want to jump on the bar stool. Hi, how are you? You know, because if the person responds negatively, if you force a reaction and you say hi, oh. and you've jumped on the bar stool, it's too big. It's like now you're, that bar stool is like glue. You're trapped. You don't know what to do. It feels awkward. <laughs> 
insecure. It's like you know falling off of a log. Log, right? Yeah. Falling off of a log, sinking a cliff. But I'd rather fall off a log than a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what you want to do is you want to do something that has the other person um, respond to you. And it, you want it to be as small as possible. Right? So if we were in Texas, I've never been to Texas, I've heard about Texas, I believe it exists. Right? I think, you're from Texas? No. Okay. <laughs> but I think it exists. Yeah, our friends moved there, so right. they must... Some of our best friends right. live in Texas, right? So, you know, if you're from Texas, you might tip your hat, right? Or like wave your gun or something, <laughs> right? Okay? I'm from New York, so I'm like, what? I'm, and we like tease everyone. I love Texas. If you're from Texas, I love you. <laughs> All right. But you understand, you want to do something that forces a person to react that is very small, and you get a read. You get the equivalent of a text bubble above their head. Which says, like, yes, I want to talk to you, or no, I don't want to talk to you. Okay? If it's a small investment, it's fine. Like, you know, you're walking by and you tip your hat or, you know, whatever, hi. And, okay, then you go. And if it's a, you know, if the answer is negative, then you just go on and you haven't lost anything. It's not a big deal. Right, so that's the next most important part is engage, right? Actually engage. But don't engage in a way where if they respond negatively, you're going to be traumatized. Well, and here's the thing as the feminine person in the situation, you have an extra superpower that you can use to test the waters and force a reaction. And we're just we are so powerful as the feminine that we don't even need to speak or even get up out of our chair. How cool is that, mm -hmm. right? All we do is, let's say I'm hanging out, you know, I don't know this guy here, but I'm like, ooh, I'm feeling the vibes, so. No! <laughs> right, that is a lot of power. All you do, you smile, you, you make that eye thing where you just give him the eyes. And it's like half a second. And if he responds, it means he's interested, he's paying attention, he wants to have a conversation. If he doesn't respond, it either means... He's not interested or he's not paying attention, in which case you can direct that energy to someone who's paying more attention, right? I mean, he was paying attention when I gave him those eyes. So we've got that extra superpower as the feminine. All right, so number four is forcing a reaction. If you're a feminine person, male, female, whatever, you have an advantage in doing that. You probably don't even have to leave your seat or say anything. You can just kind of... <laughs> How did you say flash the yeah, guy? Yeah, I didn't use that word, but exactly. <laughs> flash the guy. It's not flash the guy, but it's, you know, it's like, hey, you, know, you flash those eyes. I mean, I do it with you all the time. Right. This, you know, when you, those of you in a relationship, you can do this too. Sometimes you might be wondering, well, is my partner interested in flirting right now? Or I'd like to flirt with them. I mean, we walked into the kitchen this morning, and we haven't seen each other for a few hours. And I just said... Hey, you wear your blue robe. He wore he wore his robe until like 12 p.m. today. <laughs> and he looked so cute, and I walked into the <laughs> and um, I walked into the kitchen. And just said, "Hey." Right, and, and it's suddenly, like, mm -hmm. right now, if I wasn't present, I wouldn't notice that. I wouldn't feel. You have to be present. That's the most important. Then you have to socialize and engage. Then you have to actually take a risk, but take a small risk to get a read. Right? Whether you're in a relationship, as Alicia just described, or it's somebody out at a meetup or a party or whatever. Many of you, uh, especially here in the room, maybe those of you here online have been to some of our Tantra and sensual practice events where couples can come, singles can come, and we have a point in the evening where we invite people to pair up that want to. And we always do the exercise where everybody mills around 
and one person offers, hey, would you like to do the exercise with me? And the other person, we tell them, you say no, you know, no thank you. And then you move on to the next person. So you get used to getting some no's, like go out and get some no's. Right? And not on dating apps. We teach people how to use dating apps. We don't necessarily recommend them. It's a very, there's all kinds of problems with dating apps, by the way. But, you know, on a dating app, if you're a guy, one in every 20 overtures, you're going to get a yes. If you're a woman, like, you're going to get a yes immediately, but it doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean anything. So, um, but you are going to get a yes if you're socializing and you're forcing a reaction. If you're in person, it's going to be on average statistically, if you approach it the way we recommend it, it's going to be on average one in three. Okay. What do you do then? Okay. So number five is physically escalate the interaction. Physically escalate the interaction. Let it be a romantic interaction. So write that down, right, for those of us across the world. Physically escalate the interaction. Now this is a, a, a big mistake. Now for those of us in San Francisco, this is a mistake we make more than the rest of the world is we don't physically escalate the interaction. We start talking about, I'm going to speak New York for a moment, we start talking about some intellectual shit, right? <laughs> some documentary we saw, or work, or Google, or I don't know what. Fancy gonna, coffee. Fancy coffee. Like, don't do that. Do not talk about work. Do not talk about fancy coffee. Do not talk about um, politics, right? Don't talk about, like, smart stuff. I'm from New York. I was born in Paris. I am the smartest person in the world. Okay? <laughs> Don't, it's a liability. Don't do it. Right? Physically escalate the interaction. Like, I said, oh, hi. And she was like, oh, oh hi. Hey. I said, yeah, can I sit down? Yeah, sure. yeah, oh, great. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, wow. I love your earrings. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. They match. Yeah, they're the two. same. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, the dumber you are, the better it works, right? It's now like it's a physical interaction. We're out of the head. It's like heart to heart, body to body, right? Like one, two, and <laughs> necklace. I see necklace of the breasts. <laughs> do you see what I'm right? Like. You know, that would actually work if you're confident enough to actually do that. But the point is, escalate the interaction smoothly, gradually. Okay? You know, oh my God, that looks awesome. This is a great color. We're like, this is, we're like yeah. matching here. Yeah. Like, you know, like, Jesus Christ, pink and blue could be like a Republican. Uh -huh. You know, know, like, whoa. How'd you hear about this party? You know, um... I threw the party. Oh my gosh, are you right. Airline? Oh <laughs> my gosh! Yes. Airline? Yes. Oh, I've heard right. some stories. So you have fun, escalate, <laughs> take some risks, play, have it be physical, <laughs> be a little dangerous, right? Say some things that are outside of the box, like touch her knee, you know, ladies. You don't even need to touch them, just think of like your sexy part, right? We call it fit. Feel, Feel your pussy. <laughs> Feel your pussy. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I've ever heard you use that. Right. Well, I don't I say it. Say right. that I don't the time. I know. I'm uh, physically impaired, right? <laughs> you understand? You want to escalate the interaction. It's another risk, just like forcing a reaction. You want to do that. So we were at this workshop, right? And we had met maybe six months earlier and yada yada but we find ourselves at this workshop together over the weekend and like I'm like flirting it up with Erwan the entire time right like we're in this one of those workshops where you're like burying your soul in front of the room and crying your eyes out and then there's a dance break and everybody's dancing and I was like dancing in front of him and all this so at the end of the workshop naturally Erwan comes right up to me and he's like hey, you know, that was really fun. Would you like to get some coffee back in the city? And I'm like, 
looked at him like he was crazy and was like, I don't know, maybe. Totally blew him off because I was scared. He did not miss a beat. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, here's my number. Call me when you're ready. And then he left, like disappeared. I was just like, but, but, the, but the. he was gone. And you bet I called him the next day. He was paying attention to when I was moving towards him and when I was moving away and responded accordingly. Let's turn on. So, you know, that's number seven, which is what we call push-pull. So if you're a guy, respond to the direction that the woman is going. She'll appreciate it. She'll see that you're paying attention. If you're a woman, pay attention to your appetite and what you want and go in that direction. And if the guy is really not available or busy or something like that, yeah, you know, even as a woman, you know, back off, right? So push-pull is like, if I were to talk about it in sort of ashram, yoga, zen terms, respect, right? Really paying attention to the other person. 